Welcome to day 10 of my A4 Advent calendar. In this series of videos I show you in 24 days how to program the A4R 8-bit microcontroller. So let's take a look what's inside the box today. Alright, so here we have a UART to USB adapter. Over this adapter we can communicate over UART with our Atmega microcontroller. And how to use the UART on an A4 microcontroller is the topic for today's video. So first, what is the UART? Well, basically the UART is um, a way to communicate between two devices with yeah, two data pins. So you have a receive pin and a transmit pin. And on this transceive and re um, transmit pin you can send a chunk of data at a time. By default, a chunk of data is 1 byte, so 8 bits, but you can choose other chunks like 4 bits is the smallest one and 9 bits is the biggest one. Okay, and how can we connect this USB to serial adapter to our Atmega microcontroller? Well, here it is. So um, we have here we have the receive pin from the UART and here we have the transmit pin of the UART and we have to cross it. So we have to connect the transmit pin of our USB to UART adapter to the receive pin of our Atmega microcontroller. And for the receive pin of our converter we have to connect to our transmit pin of the microcontroller. And yeah, that's, just, that's all the connections and to use the same ground I have to connect this ground pin to the ground of my microcontroller too. Okay, so let me do the connections quickly and then um, I will go on and show you how to program the UART. So give me a second. Okay, so I've done the connections. In case you're using a Raspberry Pi instead of this USB to serial adapter, you will find a picture in my GitHub repository which shows you the connections, how to use a Raspberry Pi for serial communication with this Mega 88 microcontroller. Okay, now let's take a look at the registers we need for the serial communication. So here I am at the datasheet of the AppMega88 microcontroller and the first important register we need is the UART data register. So basically if we want to write to it, we will send out data and if we read to it, if there is data in it, we will get back this data. So yeah, and this is all we need to know about the UART data register. Then we have this UART control and status register A. Here, these bits here are important. So bit 5 is your data register empty. And for example, before we write to your data register, we can check this bit if the data register is empty. And if so, we can write to it without a data collision. Then bit 6 is the UR transmit complete and this register is set if a transmit is complete. Then we have a UR receive complete and this bit is set when new data was received. Okay, then we have UR control and status register B. Here we can enable some interrupts for example, but what we will do in here is we have to set bit 4 and 5. Yeah, four, no, four and three, because bit four is receive enable. So we have to set this if we want to use the UR receiver. And bit three is the transmit enable, which we have to choose um, or to enable or to set when we want to enable transmit. And here, for example, bit two here, we could set the character size, for example, but the default is already eight. So we will just leave this and the last here is an UART control and status register C, but we won't use this one here because the default values are fine here. But what is important here is the UART baud rate register because in this register we have to set the baud rate of the UART because both our, my, my PC here and my Mega microcontroller has to use the same baud rate so communication can work because UART don't have a clock pin or something for clock recovery. So it's important we um, synchronize receiver and the transmitter. And here in the datasheet we can see how we have to set this um, baud register or this baud rate. So let me go up here to I think it's in clock generation. 
yeah here it, here it is so here we can see how we have to set this register so the register depends on the clock frequency we're using the microcontroller and on the baud rate we want to use so to calculate the value of this register we have to divide our um, um, our CPU clock by 16 and by the baud rate we want to use and then subtract the one from it. Okay, so that's all. So now I can start writing a small program for this. And I will implement a serial loop back. This means every char I will send to the Mega Microcontroller will be echoed back. So let me navigate into my A4R Advanced Calendars folder and let me copy yeah, let's copy 9 and create a new for 10 UART and let's go into the UART folder here. In the make file I have to make an adjustment here because here our CPU frequency is set to 1 MHz but we're using this 20 MHz crystal oscillator. So let me change this to 20 MHz and instead of blink I will use serial loopback. Okay. Now here in the main function I will um, add a new define, one for the board rate, and I will set the board rate to 4800 here. And then I will um, calculate the value for the UART board rate register. And this is the CPU frequency divided by 16, divided by the board rate, and minus 1. Okay, so here I don't need these things here, but I will set um, set the TX pin to output. So here is the pinout and our TX pin is port D pin 1. So I will use um, DDRD set to 1 shifted by PD1 here. Okay, now I will set the board rate. Therefore, I will access the um, UART baud rate register zero high, and this is an unsigned char, and this is um, my UBBR are left shifted by eight, and in the lower register, I will just convert this my UBBR value to an unsigned char, and that's it. Then I will enable Rx and Tx. Therefore, I will use um, the UART control and status register 0b, and I will OR it with one shifted by um, Rx enable from UART 0, and I will OR it with one shifted by Tx enable from UART 0 here. Okay, and now I will add a function for receive and transmit brief um, function to receive a char return received char okay so char received char I will call it so here I will wait so as long as in the UART control and status register 0 a and one shifted by Rx complete zero. As long as this bit is not set, I will stay in this endless loop. So this is a blocking operation. And when this Rx complete bit is set, I will leave this loop and I can return the content of the word data register. Okay, and now let me add a send function. Brief function to send a char param data char to send. So this is a void function, I will call, call it send char. And as an argument I have to pass the char I want to send, I will call it data. So here I am waiting until the um, in the UART control and status register 0, a um, the UART data register empty is set then i leave this while loop and then i can just write to the your data register what i want to send okay i'm already done the last thing i have to do is here in this endless loop i will 
called sendshore and I will send what I have received and I will add a one to it. So for example, if I press the letter A, I will get, I will receive a B. If I um, type in the letter one, I will receive a two over this. Okay, so let me try to build it. Okay, yeah, of course, it's your data register zero here and down here as well. Okay, so this seems to work. So now let me try to flash it. Okay, zero loop like this is okay, so I will flash it. Okay, now it's flashed and now I will use screen to um, access the serial port. So screen is just a serial terminal. Uh, my USB serial adapter is connected under dev TTY USB serial and then I have to specify the baud rate which is 4800 and now I will type in a 1 and I will get back a 2. If I type in a A, I will get back a B. If I type in 5, I will get back a 6. So this really seems to work. Okay, so today we got um, sending and receiving over Yurt up and running. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. And I hope I will see you tomorrow at my next video. Bye.